Hello, beautiful friends. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to the Continuing Chronicles. It is super stormy and gray outside right now. You can probably hear the rain in the background and I thought that it would be the perfect time to go ahead and film kind of like a chit chat video. As I've mentioned multiple times, 2020 as well as 2021 and hopefully the upcoming years, I've had a very strong focus on curating the books on my physical and virtual TBR as well as the books that I read and actually decide to keep. I really want to have a strong focus in my life and on my channel on being mindful and conscientious of the books that I am choosing to spend my time reading on the books that I'm choosing to spend my money on. And basically I just want to make sure that all of the books on my shelves or even on my virtual TBR bring me joy. Nola is currently scratching against my ring light. So if the camera shakes, that's why. The inspiration for this video actually came when I was looking at all of the books on my shelves and realizing that for the most part, it fell into one of three categories, not including the books that are like my all time favorites. I'll never get rid of, I'll keep until I die kind of books. The first category pertains to authors that I have read multiple books from, but I'm not entirely sure I actually want to continue with them as an author. But because I have read several of their books and I've enjoyed some to an extent. I have a bunch of them on my red shelves and I more than likely have one or two of them on my TBR, whether I physically own them or whether they are on my virtual TBR. And I have to decide whether I actually want to continue reading these authors. Next in the category of authors that I've read, I've read one book by this author and I've held on to the book because I loved it so much. And that book convinced me that this author was going to be an auto buy that I had to absolutely read everything that they've ever written. But yet I have failed to pick up any books by them since then. So I don't even know if I'm going to mesh well with their works and if I want to continue with them as an author. And then of course there are the authors that I have not read one book by but desperately want to try. And so until I try those authors, those books just kind of hang out on my TBR and they don't go anywhere. And so realizing the patterns that I was seeing on my bookshelves and my TBR shelves, I wanted to see if there was something that I could do about that in a way to further help me with my goal towards curation. And so that's going to kind of be my focus over the next couple of months. And I'll probably get more into detail about that in my future TBR videos because I think for the moment I might put my TBR game aside to reach these goals before I bring back the TBR game. But what I really want to do today is actually discuss with you a lot of the authors that I'm talking about. Authors that are on the chopping block, meaning I've read at least two books by them and I'm not sure if I want to continue with them as an author. Author that I've read one book and loved and really need to continue with them with at least one book to decide if they are truly an author for me or if maybe that one book was just a one-off and I never really need to read anything else that they ever do. And then of course, the authors that I haven't tried but I need to go ahead and try them and either keep them firmly on my radar so that I can follow their future career with great interest or get them off my TBR so that I no longer have to think about them. This might be a little bit long you might want to grab a snack I mean who are we kidding all of my videos are long because I am just long-winded but like I said this is just going to be kind of like a chit chat kind of video where I kind of outwardly process some of my thoughts on these authors and why I want to read them why I may not want to continue with reading them and so on. Okay let's quickly go ahead and discuss some of the authors that are currently on the chopping block. Meaning I have enjoyed some of their books in the past but maybe some of the other books that I've read haven't really impressed me and I'm not sure if I want to invest my time in them going forward. The first one that really comes to mind in this regard is Christina Lauren. I read Autobiography by them a couple of years ago. This is their first and I believe only YA contemporary and I really really enjoyed it. I thought it tackled a lot of tough issues like sexuality and religion. It handled it with grace and insight and openness and I really enjoyed this and this further cemented the idea that I wanted to continue with them as an author because I know that they primarily write adult contemporary temporary and I hear so much praise for them. They are a writing duo. They are like two best friends that write together and I really wanted to try some of their adult contemporary. I read Dating You Hating You and I really didn't love this one. I think I gave it a 3 or a 3.5 star so it was okay. Like the ultimate reading experience was fine and enjoyable and compulsively readable but in the end I was just left wanting. I didn't really feel like this lived up to its advertised promise of being a hate to love romance and I found a lot of technical issues with this as well particularly regarding some of the social commentary in here but it was like okay and so I kept it on my shelves. And then I read my favorite Half Night Stand. Y'all know that this made it on my least favorite books of 2020 list. And this is the book that really made me question whether I wanted to continue with Christina Lauren as an author. I am just so convinced that I'm going to love this writing duo, that they are the adult contemporary writers for me and I just need to find the right book. Especially because like The Unhoneymooners gets nothing but amazing praise and I want to read that. And I also have at least one more book on my shelves by them that I have not read. I kind of want to read that book and see if it redeems these authors in my eyes. And if not, I don't think I'm going 
going to continue with them. I'm okay with having an author that has a miss every now and then amongst a bunch of hits, but when it is mostly misses and I'm not getting very many hits, I don't think I really want to waste my time and energy on them. So I'm going to read one more book by Christina Lauren, give them one more chance. And if I don't enjoy that book, I think they're just going to go. I kind of feel the same way about Leanne Moriarty. Now, what Ellis forgot was my very first book by Leanne Moriarty. And to be honest with you, I don't remember a whole ton about this book, but I do know that I enjoyed it a good deal to know that I wanted to continue with her as an author. It did lead me to want to pick up Big Little Lies and I loved this. This was superb. It was like a very interesting mixture of adult domestic drama combined with a little bit of a mystery and I just loved it. I thought it was so compelling and well written. I just truly enjoyed this and this further again made me want to read more Leanne Moriarty. But then I picked up The Husband's Secret and this was just okay. This didn't blow me away. It was as well written as the other Leanne Moriarty books. I just didn't connect with the plot of it and so it was just kind of meh. I think I gave it a three, 3.5 stars. So it was a solid and again an overall enjoyable reading experience but it didn't do much for me. And then the very last book that I read by Leanne Moriarty, Truly Madly Guilty, I didn't enjoy it at all. I gave it like a two, 2.5 stars. I really, really disliked this and because of that it's made me question whether I want to continue with her as an author because this is one of her more recent books. I believe Big Little Lies is older. The Husband's Secret is older. I think What Alice Forgot is older. So this is one of the newest books she's written. It was written in 2016 and I didn't love it. And I do have one more book of hers on my shelves. It's Nine Perfect Strangers. I believe I bought that when it came out because it was a book of the month selection and it's just been sitting on my shelves. And I'm really nervous because I've been hearing a lot of really mixed things about it. So I think I need to read it and decide for myself whether I want to continue with Leanne Moriarty as an author. I'm kind of in a similar situation with Casey West. So I read By Your Side. This was the very first book by Casey West that I read and it was okay. It was definitely what you would expect a Casey West book to be. It was quick, compulsively readable, just very fluffy and heartwarming and things of that nature. And I enjoyed it enough that I wanted to give her another shot. Then I picked up Love Life and the List and this blew me away. I loved it. This was more than just a fluffy contemporary. It had harder hitting elements. I thought this was really well done, really solid. And this definitely made Casey West on my radar. So then I picked up P.S. I Like You and surprisingly I enjoyed this just as much if not more as Love Life and the List. This has that you've got mail trope that I love so much and I thought it was really cute and really well done and sweet and heartwarming and again it had some harder hitting elements to it as well and so I loved it. I picked up the fill-in boyfriend and this was not very good. I didn't really enjoy this one at all. This was just really unsubstantial. It was just really super high schooly, very short, didn't really do much for me but because I had such positive feelings about the other books that I read by her I picked up Listen to Your Heart and I believe this was actually read in January. This is definitely the most recent book that I read by Casey West and it was okay. This was another three, 3.5 stars. I didn't hate this by any means, but this was just kind of an example of why I'm moving away from YA contemporary because I didn't get the substance that I wanted. I didn't get the character development that I wanted. I couldn't forget that I was reading a young adult novel just because it was so obviously high school, the way they talked, their priorities, the way they handled things, the miscommunication and things like that. So I didn't love this one. So I currently have read five books by Casey West. Two were stand out at four plus stars. Two were very, very meh and average and one was just a no-go. Oh, she's probably standing at around like a 3.5 average rating and that's just not enough for me to want to continue with her as an author. So I definitely want to read one more book by her, kind of seal the deal to see if she's an author that I just want to continue with no matter what and maybe have some hits and maybe have some misses and go from there or if I really just want to move away from her entirely and not even attempt to waste my time. All right now here is an author that I know so many people don't like. It seems like you either love him or you hate him and that is John Green. The Fault in Our Stars was the very first book that I ever read by John Green back in 2012. I believe that's when it came out and I loved this. Of course, I can't say if I would love it now just because it's been so long. It's been nine years since I read this and I'm a very different person. I'm a very different reader. But when I read this, this killed me. I cried. I thought it was so beautiful. And of course, it made me want to pick up more by John Green. I then picked up Looking for Alaska a couple of years later and I honestly don't remember anything about this. And I did check my rating on Goodreads and this ended up being a three stars, which explains why I don't remember anything. But this of course has received critical praise. It has won an award, but I don't remember anything about this at all. I read his newest release, Turtles All the Way Down, back in 2017. I also did not love this book at all either. I didn't love the story. I thought it was kind of all over the place. And John Green just does not know how to write teenagers. His teenagers are so overtly mature and existential and philosophical. They just don't feel real. They don't feel like you are reading teenagers. And this was the epitome of that. So I did not enjoy this one. Another one I didn't enjoy was The Abundance of Catherines. I definitely gave this two stars. This is by far my least favorite John Green. I just didn't see the point of it. Very short. Again, not much point. There was like nothing going on. There wasn't a lot of character development. It was just the ultimate forgettable, why waste your time on it kind of read. And then probably my second favorite was Paper Towns by John Green. I'm not really sure why I enjoyed this so much considering that Margot, I just 
just, I didn't like her at all. I found her very, very selfish. And I didn't like what she put our main character through as he's trying to find her because she kind of disappears off the face of the earth and he goes on a journey to find her. But I enjoyed him and his journey, which is why I think I enjoyed this so much. And that is why it's my second favorite John Green. But ultimately, as you can see, I've read five John Green books. And for the most part, I'm rating his books three stars or less. You know, they're nothing really spectacular to me. And kind of as I'm processing this and taking this in, I really don't think I need to continue with John Green as an author. He just doesn't really intrigue me. But I just have such positive feelings about The Fault in Our Stars. Like, I loved that book. And it really upsets me that some of his more recent reads just are disappointing and they're not anywhere near the caliber I thought that The Fault in Our Stars was. Now again, if I read The Fault in Our Stars now, I don't know if I would love it as much, but I still have such positive feelings. It's really hard for me to let John Green go as an author, but I think he's just kind of proof of what I'm moving away from. Another author that is kind of on the chopping block, but kind of not, is Megan Miranda. So the very first book that I read by her was actually her young adult, Fragments of the Lost. I think she's written a couple other young adult, but she primarily specializes in adult mystery thrillers. I read this and it was okay. I didn't, but it wasn't anything mind-blowing. Again, it was something that was like compulsively readable, very engaging. I liked the way that it was told, but in the end, like the big reveals and all of that stuff didn't really do much for me. So I think I gave this like a three stars. Then I read probably her most well-known book and that's All the Missing Girls. And I had a tough time deciding my feelings on this because if you're not familiar with this, this is told kind of wonky. So the first couple of chapters is setting you up. It is told in a standard, straightforward, like linear progression. But then the majority of this is told backwards. I think for like 15 days, you start at day 15 and you move towards day one and then at the very end it wraps up and it kind of tells you where everything left off and I didn't understand why she did that. I didn't at first think it added anything to the story but the more that I went away from it I feel like it did because when you're starting on day 15 you're getting one impression and then you get to day one and you realize you were completely wrong and it makes you rethink everything that you read in the days before. So now that I think back on it, I think it was a really creative way to do it. But again, like the big reveals and all of that weren't necessarily super surprising or ingenious or anything like that. I can appreciate the way that this was told. I can appreciate why this is so well loved. And I did enjoy it enough and think about it enough afterwards to again, want to continue with her as an author. I did read Perfect Stranger by Megan Miranda. I think it was in 2020. And again, this was okay. I find Megan Miranda's books to be solid and that they provide you with a good reading experience, even though they're not going to be like mind blowing. They're not going to knock you off your feet. They're not going to be super suspenseful. They're not going to have like this amazing plot twist that you never see coming. But I enjoyed the overall time when I'm reading her books and this was no exception. And I also thought she was going to take a specific direction in this, which she did not. And everything that she's writing kind of leads you to believe she's going in that predictable way. And then when it doesn't, it kind of makes you appreciate her the way she wrote it even more. But again, even though this didn't knock my socks off and it was like only a three, 3.5 stars, it still leaves me wanting more from Megan Miranda. And I know that she's published a few new books recently. So she's on the chopping block, but if I do read another book by her and pretty much enjoy it the same way and same amount that I've enjoyed these others, I'll probably go ahead and continue with her. So I definitely have quite a few more authors that are on the chopping block, authors that I've read maybe one book by and that didn't really impress me and so I need to read another book just to kind of cement that feeling and then decide whether I'm going to unhaul them and not think about them anymore but I kind of want to move on into some other categories before this gets excessively long. There are a lot of books on my shelves that I have kept because I have loved them and enjoyed them greatly and I knew that I wanted to pick up more by these authors but since then I have failed to do so. Some of them I do have additional books on my TBR shelves, some of them I don't but they are still very much on my virtual TBR and on my radar and I need to go ahead and read more books by these authors to again decide whether they are going to stay in my mental mind palace. If they are going to stay on my radar or if I can just go ahead and get rid of them. But let me just run through some of them really quick. Sadie by Courtney Summers. Really, really enjoyed this. I do have another one of Courtney Summers books on my shelf, so I need to go ahead and read it, decide if Courtney Summers is for me or if I'm going to go ahead and not bother with her as an author. Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone. This book impressed me so much. It still remains one of my favorite contemporaries of all time. And I need to actually reread that to see if my feelings are still the same. I read this all the way back in 2017 and it left such a solid lasting impression on me. I think the impact might be lessened just because there is a fairly big twist in this book that you don't really see coming. And of course, now that I know the twist, it wouldn't be as impactful, but I think the overall story would still be beautiful. This deals heavily with mental health and I absolutely want to read other things that Tamara Ireland Stone has written. She hasn't written much, so I could definitely knock out one or two of her books to decide if she's an author that I want to continue with going forward. Bad Romance by Heather Dimitrios. Holy cow, 
This was about a toxic relationship. It was done so well. It was so infuriating. It made you feel all the things. I absolutely need to read another Heather Demetrio. I want to see if her other books are as hard hitting, if I enjoy them as much, and if she could be a solid staple author for me and my collection. Emmy and Oliver by Robin Benway. This actually made it into my top books of 2020. This snuck up on me and became one of my favorite contemporaries of all time. I just loved it so much. I love the relationships in here, the family dynamics, the conversations that were had. I just loved everything about it. I do have one more book by Robin Benway on my shelves. It's called Far From the Tree. That has gotten a lot of praise. It's one of her more recent releases and I'm excited to get to it and see if Robin Benway again is going to be another staple contemporary author in my collection. Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard. When I read this, I was recommending it to everyone. Again, I believe I read this back in 2017, 2018. This actually deals with disability representation that you don't often see in books. So I really appreciated that. I don't remember a lot of what happened in here. I just remember that I thought it was a very good, solid contemporary. And I do have other Sarah Bernards on my shelves. I have two or three other books by her on my shelves. And so I definitely need to read at least one more and decide if I want to continue with her. And if not, I need to get them off of my TBR. Ruta Sepetis. This is tough. I don't remember anything about this book, but Ruta Sepetis gets such high acclaim as a historical fiction author and I either need to reread this or read another book by her to determine if I want to continue. I really want to dive more deeply into historical fiction because it seems like every time I read historical fiction I really love it and enjoy it but it's never something I'm in the mood for even though I know I'm going to enjoy it. I feel like it takes an extra amount of concentration. I also have to be in the mood for the gut punch that I know is coming with historical fiction because a lot of the times it's related around war. There's going to be a lot of death and violence and pain and struggle and survival. And while I eat all of that up, I just have to be in the right mental headspace for that. So I think I want to give Ruta Sepetis another chance. She gets too much high praise for me to just outwardly give up on her as an author just because I don't remember what this is about. And that's basically why I'm mentioning her here is because I don't remember this and I feel like it would be remiss of me to just unhaul this book and not ever pick up another book by her when I really don't know my feelings. I'm kind of having the same issue with Peter Swanson. I read this a couple of years ago and this did not impress me. I think I gave it like a 3, 3.5 stars. I don't remember hardly anything that happened in here because again it was such like a mediocre meh read at the time that I did read it. But he has since come out with so many books that sound interesting. Even some of his works before this sound really, really interesting. And he consistently gets high praise from specific people. And I'm like, okay, I think I'm missing something. And I definitely need to give him another shot. Now that I'm more firmly rooted in my reading tastes and I know what I like, I think I definitely want to give him another shot and see what he has to offer. So he is another one that I want to give one more chance to before I outwardly decide not to read him, especially since I don't remember much about this one. AJ Finn. I honestly don't know if he has another book. And that's pretty much like the only reason at this point why I haven't read another one by him. I love this. I thought this was wonderful and I definitely need to see the movie about it. I know that an adaptation was recently released or is going to be released. So if he comes out with another book, I will definitely be reading it to see if, it, again, he becomes a staple mystery thriller author. Claire McIntosh is another one. I read this and really, really enjoyed it. There were a couple of twists in there that I didn't really see coming. I thought this was wonderfully crafted. Reading the synopsis of this makes you think one thing and that's one of the twists. You kind of realize that your perception has been skewed from the very beginning based on the synopsis in this book. So I enjoyed that. I definitely do have one more of her books on my shelves. I absolutely need to read it. Real quick, another author I kind of want to discuss that's maybe on the chopping block is Riley Sager. If you've been around a while, you'll know that I hate this book. I went into so many rants about this. This is definitely one of the worst books that I read. I believe it was in 2019. I was so hyped to read this and I was so disappointed. He came out, he emerged on the scene and he blew up. Everybody was raving about this. And then by the time that I had read it, I had actually already picked up the other three books that had been out at the time. I was very late getting to this. And by the time I read it and hated it, I was so, so worried because I was convinced that I was going to love him. And then I read Home Before Dark and I loved it. This is exactly what I wanted to see from Riley Sager. So now I have his two middle books. So Final Girls was his first. This is his most recent before, I think he's just released another one or he has another one coming out this year. But I have his two middle books and I need to read one and just kind of see if it's more closely related to this or Final Girls. I can't explain to you why, but I am so intrigued by Riley Sager and his books that I feel like I'm going to be picking him up no matter how I feel. So he's kind of along the same lines of Megan Miranda. Like his plots just intrigue me so much that even if my enjoyment is only partially as much as I enjoyed this, that I would probably continue with him. Then we have Simone St. James. This was one of my top favorite books of 2020. I loved it. This surprised the hell out of me. I was not expecting to love this as much as I did. I tore through this in less than 24 hours and this has definitely cemented Simone St. James as an auto by author. But again, 
I need to be sure of that. I need to be sure that this is not a one-off. So I need to read another book by her and just kind of cement her status. And that way I won't have any trepidation going forward. I really don't want these books sitting on my shelves where I look and think fondly of one book, but then never try to pick up that author again and wonder why. So this is definitely an author I need to try. Same with Bryn Greenwood. This was an honorable mention in my favorite books of 2020. And holy cow, this book was dark. It was disturbing, but it was so beautiful and touching. I can't even explain. She did it so well. She took this topic that is absolutely taboo. I hate to say pedophilia because it technically was, but the way that she presented it here did not make it feel like pedophilia. If you have read this, you will know what I'm talking about, but I definitely need to read more. She's released one other one that I need to get and it sounds weird. It sounds unusual and that's really not my jam, but I want to give it a try because this just impressed me so much. Diane Chamberlain is another author that I tried recently and want to read more from, absolutely. I know Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand recently read a book by her and it was like her favorite book of 2020. I know Krista from Books and Jams has read this and another and she really enjoyed Diane Chamberlain. So basically I'm getting nothing but really great praise about Diane Chamberlain. I just need to give her another shot and make sure that I want to continue with her as an author. Okay, so those are some of the one-offs so far, the ones that I've read and really, really enjoyed and definitely need to keep that momentum going. They need to find a home on my bookshelves and if not, they need to go. Also really quick, if you're wondering why I haven't really shown any fantasy so far, that's because the majority of the fantasy books that I read are series. And if I've kept them on my shelves, that means I intend to continue in the series. So there really is no question about that. I will absolutely be continuing. And if somewhere down the line in those series, I decide that it's not for me, then I would probably address that in the future. But basically the majority of the fantasy, this is actually my fantasy sci-fi shelf right behind me. If I decide that I'm not going to continue in those series, then yeah, that's a question for that time. But for right now, basically everything on here, these are authors that I absolutely want to continue with. And next, I kind of just want to run through a bunch of authors that I have my eye on. They are currently on my physical and my virtual TBR, and I just need to make a decision about them. I need to decide whether they are going to continue taking up space or whether I can go ahead and move on. One of the most prominent ones that I continuously think about is actually Jennifer L. Armentrout, and that's especially true with her recent series, Blood and Ash, I believe. I've been hearing a lot of amazing things about that series, and in general, JLA is very, very prolific. She's been around for a while, and I've heard that she writes pretty solid, maybe like parent paranormal romance or just, you know, contemporaries or things of that nature. I think she kind of runs the gamut with a bunch of different genres. So I'm really interested in trying her out. I'm also interested in trying a bunch of mystery thriller authors that I have heard consistently good things about. TJ Tudor is one, but I don't own any of her books. Sherry Lapina is definitely one. I do own one of her books that I want to try. A recent one that I've decided to give a shot is Lisa Jewell. I've been seeing Lisa Jewell everywhere for so long, but there was always something keeping me from wanting to read her. But I think I'm willing to give her a, a shot because she is prolific. She releases new content pretty regularly. She's consistently featured on Book of the Month and I do rely on Book of the Month pretty heavily for mystery and thriller recommendations. So if she's constantly on there, she can't be all bad, right? So I definitely want to read at least one of her books and make a decision. Tana French and Louise Penny, they both write pretty well-loved mystery thriller, maybe even detective fiction that I want to try. So they are definitely on my radar to try very, very soon. Meg Golden, she wrote The Escape room, which I didn't read, but I do have The Night Swim. I got that from Book of the Month and I've heard really, really great things about that. So I want to read that and see what I feel and then maybe go back to The Escape Room and see if she's again another solid mystery thriller author. I do have a couple of Alex North on my shelves. He wrote The Whisper Man as well as The Shadows. And I, again, I've heard good things about those and I definitely want to try. I also want to try Samantha Downing. She wrote My Lovely Wife, which I know Books and Lala absolutely loved. And she's also just come out with another one. I definitely need to get on that bandwagon and try her as well. Also, Jen McMahon. I had never heard of her before. Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library kept talking and raving about her books. I don't really know what specific genre she writes, but I believe she kind of writes sometimes like apocalyptic, sometimes mysteries. I'm not really sure where she fits in, but her books sound fantastic. So I definitely want to give her a shot as well. If you have solid mystery thriller authors, please comment down below and let me know. I'm definitely on the hunt for them and I need to give these authors a try and see if they are worth keeping around. There are definitely a few like fantasy sci-fi authors I want to try. Blake Crouch is one. I've heard amazing things about his sci-fi. I do have Recursion and I've heard a lot of great things about Dark Matter so I want to jump into him as well as Andy Weir. The Martian gets nothing but high praise. I know so many people love that book so I want to see what all of the fuss is about. Joe Abercrombie is probably one of the most consistently highly praised adult fantasy authors. I've also heard really great things about Josiah Bancroft, Nicholas Eames, Mark Lawrence. Those are probably the top ones on my radar that I need to try and y'all know that I did start the Game of Thrones series in 2019 so I do want to continue with George R.R. R. Martin. I also did start the Mistborn series by Brandon C. 
Sanderson's. So I need to continue with that series. And I know he has a bunch of other series and the Stormlight Archives is going to be very long. So I definitely need to dive more into him. I also do want to get more into romance. I think Jennifer L. Armentrout would definitely fall into this category in some instances. Penny Reed and her Beard series, I've heard a lot of amazing things about as well. And I want to dive into her. Serena Bowen, I read the first book in her True North series and I want to dive more deeply into her. I have very specific tastes when it comes to romance. I can't ask for widespread recommendations because I need my romance to feel very substantial. I need there to be some slow burn. I cannot connect to people that just like jump right into the relationship. So I need a little bit of that. I need a little bit of that angst and that conflict. Y'all know that The Simple Wild is probably one of my favorite contemporaries of all time. I just recently read Rescue You by Alicia Whistler and that was phenomenal. I absolutely loved that. So those are the type of contemporaries that I'm going for, those adult romances. And if you have any recommendations related to those, I would love to know. All right, y'all, that is it. That was a lengthy video. So thank you so much for sticking around. Again, the point of this is really to help me with my goal of curation. A lot of these authors are authors that I need to read for the first time or give a second, third, fourth chance to, to decide if I really want to waste my time and energy on them going forward, because I'm really not sure. And seeing them on my shelves gives me some sense of anxiety. I know that probably sounds silly, but it really, really does, especially since there's so many books and so little time. I really want to make an effort to prioritize these authors over the next coming months and really make a decision. And I feel that that will also help me narrow down my TBR quite a bit. All right, y'all, that is it. Please, again, comment down below with your author recommendations. I would love to hear them or I would love to hear your thoughts on some of the authors that I mentioned here today. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I post content on Tuesdays, sometimes Thursdays, and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye, guys.